Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unplugged Woodworkers podcast. So last week I didn't manage to I didn't manage to get a, a podcast out. I've been super super busy. I've been trying to catch up on on orders and whatnot. Um I have had problems <laughs> should should we say. So for anybody that follows us on social media, um they'll probably know that I have had issues with tannin in the the table I was making. So this dining table I've been making, it's it's been sitting like pretty much finished other than to apply the finish um the Osmo oil on the tabletop itself, the legs are done um I used um ammonia on the legs so the legs were treated with ammonia um i applied um four coats of osmo oil so the legs were were done ready to go and it's just been the top i've just been pretty much you know trying different things i've tried um what did i try i tried vinegar i tried just today i've tried uh, the tannin remover is it wako waka the tannin remover. Um, I've tried numerous, numerous um, applications of that today. It did dissipate a little bit, but it's kind of still there. Um, I tried sugar soap, which actually did remove. It did actually pull quite a lot of uh, the the tannin out on the first initial um, scrubbing, but after that, it didn't seem to bring any more to the surface. So I'm kind of still stuck with these these uh, tannin stains um i did have it confirmed what i already thought which is basically um the the oak when it's been stacked it's been stacked with oak stickers um and for anyone that doesn't know these basically these these stickers are are just like thin sticks and it's just to allow the air to to flow in between the um the slabs that have been stacked um and basically the 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 tannin in the the stickers and the tannin in the um the slabs have just had a chemical reaction and it's and it's basically left like a like a stain um going across the grain. So there's pictures of this if you want to check it out on the on social media on my Instagram and stuff. Uh, there'll be links in the description. So yeah basically that's just been a bit of a nightmare. <clears throat> As I said I've tr- I've tried quite a lot of things I have also been, as I said, catching up on other orders. Uh, so it was actually quite nice just <laughs> just to get some smaller stuff. Uh, for anyone that doesn't follow us on social media, this table it was actually, I don't know if I mentioned it in my last podcast, but I actually, <laughs> I measured this, uh, sorry, I weighed this table on my um, bathroom scales and it was eight and a half stone that was with the legs um i'm not sure of the poundage on that so if anyone wants to work it out it's like it's like 14 pounds to a stone i think it was somewhere kind of like 55 kilograms ish somewhere around there so it's quite a hefty table so yeah it's as i said it was it's just nice to get some smaller uh, t- to make a start on some smaller furniture which i am doing um today i was um um built start to build a a tv unit uh, this is only like 800 millimeters long so you know there's a big difference in size which was pretty cool so today i wanted to talk about um shape shaping wooden um cutting shapes out um i have kind of touched on this a little bit in previous um podcasts but i'm kind of gonna go over a few other things i haven't really covered um so i'm just gonna kind of like like go through like um some of the tasks i do um and some of the furniture i make and basically you know just um summarize how i do it basically so uh, rounding over corners um now i'm not talking about the edges i'm actually talking about the the corner you know um if it was a if it was a tabletop so 
if it was if it was kind of a small tabletop, um, you know, like like a say a coffee table, pretty much what I would do, I would obviously get the radius. Um, you know, I don't tend to use um, kind of um, a compass for this. I normally just use whatever I've got to hand, whether it be a, a tin of beans, <laughs> believe it or not. But this this is what I this, this is what I do. Yeah, a tin of beans. It might be a it might be a, a two pound coin, um, a bottle lid, anything like that. Anything that's the right size for me. I'll I'll kind of use it. I don't tend to measure these either. You know, if it just kind of looks right on the eye, I'll just grab it and and draw around it. So I will mark it out like that. And depending on the thickness of the material, if it's kind of anywhere from half an inch to three quarters of an inch, I'll literally just take the chisel straight to that um, and just hog away, like you know, pretty much to the line with the with the chisel and a mallet. And I, and I've done it so many times now, and that's kind of my that's kind of my thing. That's how I do it. Um, I can, I'm quite accurate at doing that. Um, I finish up with uh, the Shinto rasp, um, a regular file, and maybe some sandpaper after that. Um, so if it's kind of thicker material, the likes of what I've just been doing in the tabletop, which is, I think that's, after I've planed it and everything, I think it's around 45 millimetres. So I will actually mark it out, you know, um, I forget what I used. I think I, I think I actually used the tin of beans uh, for for the for the radius, um, the corners of that um, table. And with that thickness, I would actually just, and I did draw a 45 degree um, line on the corner and I just took my sword of that. Once the corner was off um, and then I, I used my chisel, um, you know, took took away the two the two edges, you know, where I'd cut that, the two edges of the, uh, the two ends of the 45 degree and obviously it starts rounding when you do that. Um, after that, Again, a uh, Shinto rasp file and then a bit of sandpaper, you know, and it's, it actually, when you're doing this, it's actually super, super quick, you, you know, it, me describing it, it, it kind of makes it sound like it, it takes a long time, but it actually doesn't take that, uh, that much time, to be honest with you. So, I have, over, over the years, I have seen a lot of other people, um, kind of do this and a lot of people use like a you know a coping saw or a or a, a frame like a like a frame saw a bow saw you know something like that um i don't like doing this i just think it takes it just takes too much time um obviously i have seen like a lot of people they use band saws as well but obviously you can only use a band saw for you know, uh, it'll be smaller pieces, you know, like a small uh, coffee table, something like that, or, or whatever else, you know, you, you want to round over. But uh, as I said, um, you know, if you're going to be doing, doing like the likes of a, a dining table, you know, I have seen people use the the frame saw, the bow saw, if, if you like. Um, and I, I, I just think it leaves, it's, it's just, it's just, it takes too long <laughs> for me. For me, it really does. So another good example would be for for me personally would be for cutting out um, patterns, and as I said, a, a good example for this would be um, the blanket chest that I do. There's probably I'm probably going to use a picture of this on the thumbnail. Um, it'll also be present on on Instagram and Facebook when I advertise this um, this podcast episode. So, I'm <laughs> I'm kind of not going to try and describe it to you because it's I'm probably going to do a really bad job of describing it. So, you know, if you're really interested, go and go and check the picture of the you know the thumbnail of this episode, or go and have a look on social media. But basically, 
you know, it's it's a kind of a like a fancy pattern on the very bottom of a blanket chest. Um, you know, it consists of um, I, that I said I wasn't going to describe it. I'll I'll, I'll have a little go. <laughs> I'll have a little go. See if I can. So, a little bit past the corner of the dovetail. I, I think I go maybe about two or three inches past the dovetails from the corner. Um, you know, and then you have basically you have like a quadrant and at the top of that quadrant we'll have another quadrant and this other quadrant kind of kind of swoops down into like a you know a bit of a wave to the center and the center has you know it's it starts to go into like a bit of a you know like a like an arch or an arc or however you want to say that and then obviously it's just a mirror image of, of the other side so Again, I've seen a lot of people will cut something like this on the bandsaw. Obviously, I don't have a bandsaw. Um, and I've also seen people use, uh, again, bow saws, frame saws, um, coping saws. And I, I just think it's it's just too much. It's just too much faff on. It takes too long for a start. For me, it does anyway. And you, you you tend to have a lot of a lot of clean up. I mean, when you when you're using something f like a fine saw like that, you, you tend to you know I I can't really describe what I'm what I'm thinking in my brain here, but it's basically basically when you when you take a, a spoke shave over the top of the top of the all the so, like the saw marks, I I tend to find you, you get a lot of chatter with it, and it's you know it just makes it awkward for you to use it. To, to use the spoke shave that's the only kind of way I can describe it so the way that I do it is basically when you're first starting off with the radiuses I try to I try to meet that radius with with a abrasion bit you know what why tr why try and cut for me why try and cut out the circle when you've got a bit that'll cut the circle out for you if that makes sense, you know, and you're going to get the perfect circle, you know, don't get us wrong, you're still going to have to clean it up uh, with some, you know, a little bit of sandpaper and whatnot, but primarily you're going to get a pretty decent circle rather than trying to cut a circle out with a, you know, with a bow saw or a coping saw. So basically I'll, dr I'll drill the four holes uh, you know, and this would be to represent the, you know, the four quadrants. So you've got two quadrants uh, either side of of one side of the blanket chest. Um, and then after that, dep depending on, you know, how, how I'm feeling. Sometimes I'll just I'll actually cut a straight edge all the way down. If I've got a sharp saw, meaning is me saw is me saw sharp, you know. Have have I sharpened it not so long ago? Because you know the dough tend to get the dough tend to get blunt quite quickly, especially when you're using them day in and day out to to rip material and to cross cut material. And anyone that follows us on social media knows I don't I, I don't even own a, a rip saw, um, electric rip saw, uh, circular saw, anything like that. So I do literally cut like rip everything by hand. So. You know, my saws, my saws do probably get um, uh, uh, blunts a lot quicker than anybody else's. That's not using them on a day, a day uh, basis. So, as I said, if they are decent and it's you know it's not going to take us too long, I'll actually I'll I'll just rip down. Um, another technique that I that I use and I have used it for a long time, and it has it is actually pretty a quick um, technique. Once I've once I've um, cut the radiuses with me with me bracing bits, I will actually I'll just cut a lot of uh, relief lines, and you know this this will just whatever you know with me uh, with me Ryobi saw, with me tenon saw, whatever you know. So basically, I'm just going to cut a, a lot of relief um, cuts all the way along the pattern. Uh, these are about maybe an, an inch apart um, maybe an inch and a half sometimes you know I don't I kind of don't really measure these I just you know I just tie them out and I you know as I cut so once 
once I've I've done this, I just I just take the chisel to it, you know, and um, and obviously very quickly just go along with a chisel and a mallet and just you you basically just you know um, knocking notches off. Yeah, and again, this is really really quick. Um, you know, I do try to get um, pretty close to the line when I'm doing this, but obviously you have you have got to pay attention to the way the grain's running. Um, so on and so forth so once once I get out as, as close as I can um, I work from the centre of the board um, and I just pretty much just use a chisel and I just hog off quite a lot of material and again I, I get quite close to the line I've done this so many times I, I am you know I can get this pretty accurate so as I said I work from the centre of the line and I work down towards the radiuses once once I get um, as close as, as I'm comfortable with, um, which does tend to be pretty close, I'll use a spoke shave um, and then I'll finish up with a, a card scraper. Um, the card scraper can be a lifesaver with doing things like this because it can really get into tight spaces, you know, um, you know, if you haven't if you're having trouble getting planes in or you know your spoke shaving it, it can be really good so you know don't um don't knock a cord scraper as long as a cord scraper is sharp you know it's 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 ideal it really is ideal um i've done a video not so long ago um for anybody that wants to check it out um, I have actually just started doing um, playlists for you know for sharpening and, and whatever else, so it's on there if you if you want to check the playlists out. But there'll be a link to uh, there'll be a link in the description to my YouTube uh, channel if you, if you want to check that out. So something I, I actually forgot to mention. Sometimes I will actually I will actually use me. My chisel is a bit of a scraper on the radiuses. Um, you know, sometimes depending on the the orientation of the grain. Um, sometimes the you know when you use the the, the brace and bit, it can actually you know be a bit jaggedy if you like, um, not so smooth. And sometimes it's just um, quick and easier to use the the chisel as actually a like a bit of a scraper um and then finish up with a bit of a bit of sandpaper um i've i've done this i've done this for many years now i, I don't think i've seen anybody else um do it to be honest with you i think there might be there may be a video of me demonstrating this on maybe the the blanket chest um what's it titled um, uh, making a blanket chest on a Roman workbench I think I think that's the title of it obviously it'll be in me uh, it's on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out okay so next on the list is cutting out squares so how I used to cut squares out um, basically would be to to, to drill two holes at either corner, see if we were cutting a square out or, or even a even a rectangle. So basically, there would be two holes drilled at either side. Those would typically be three quarters of an inch. I would use a a key a key saw, a key hole saw. Um, the one I'm actually using at the moment. This is actually this was this gets sold as a. A Japanese uh, pruning saw, so basically it just it cuts on the pull, um, and it's it's very well suited as a as a keyhole saw. Um, you know, get, it can get into some really tight um, you know areas, and it's super sharp. You know, um, where did I get this from? I think I got this from uh, Workshop Heaven. Um, so if if you want to have a if you want to check that out. But it's it, it was one of the it's one of the better um, keyhole saws personally what I've used because I have owned owned a our um, <laughs> I'm all tongues tonight um, it is one of the better saws I've owned 
I have had a few in the past. Um, as I said, and this is like really, really sharp. So basically, what I would do with the with the two holes um, drilled, I can actually get the the keyhole saw in, and I can cut you know the, the narrow piece. And then the longer piece, if it's a rectangle or, or basically, you know, two sides. Um, and then obviously just repeat that. That's how I used to do it. And I do occasionally still do that. Depending on if I want to re reuse the material or, you know, for, for example, I haven't actually done this, but I know there's actually, you know, there's actually um, cases where you might you might want to do this and you might be able to get away with this. Where you would say if you were going to be doing some sort of a, I don't know, maybe a a dining table, um, you know, and you wanted to, you wanted to cut a, um, actually add a draw into it, you know, you you might want to cut the square out or the or the rectangle or all that, and use that rectangle, you know, part of the draw, rather than having to waste it, and because you've got two two holes in either corner. And this is actually, a, it's a pretty decent technique as well. So basically, um, you would you would clamp a piece of um, wood on to where you're cutting. Um, and this is basically just as a, a guide piece, if you like, to, uh, to make sure the, the saw is at, you know, 90 degrees and you're actually going to be, like, sawn in a straight line. So... I'm going to try and pronounce this, and this is a Japanese, so, so, as a Becky, if I'm saying, I'll probably butcher that name, like, but, how do I spell it? We'll spell it A-Z-E-B-I-K-I. So, yeah, that's, that's one of those saws, and it, it kind of, it's only a, like, a small saw, you know, it's, it kind of reminds me of a, like, a fish, if you like. I think I have posted pictures of this on on my Instagram. I think probably some time ago, but I do it does it does get used occasionally. Um, so basically, this you could think of this as a as a plunge saw. You know, so you don't it doesn't need you know you don't need any holes to start it off. Basically, you just you put it on and you just start cutting. And the way it's shaped, the way it's, you know, the way it's designed, you know, you, you just start basically cutting and plunging at the same time, if you like. Obviously, until you get to the other side, once you get to the other side, you make enough, you make enough room for another one of your saws to fit in, which personally I do. Um, you know, you probably me Ryobi, once I've got enough room to get that in and I'll I'll switch saws, I'll take the guide away and I'll I'll use me Ryobi. And that's that's pretty much, you know, how I would how I would do it um, um you know, like like cut a square out. So if you were gonna if you were gonna cut a square out and again if you wanted um radiuses on the corner you know, you would just pretty much you could you could repeat this process, you know. But before you started it, you would obviously just drill the uh, four holes at, at the correct radius, whatever you wanted, you know, whatever the radius was. And, you know, you might get away with three quarter of an inch or half an inch, whatever the radius is, um, and just and just repeat the process. So, cutting out circles. Um, cutting out smaller circles. We'll we'll start with the smaller circle. So, and I'm 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 actually talking about um not an internal but an external uh, circle. So you're actually cutting out the circle shape if you like. Um. Ob- obviously, you know if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be cutting out like a really small circle, I'm talking you know maybe. You know, like seventy millimeters, something like that, or a hundred millimeters. You, you know, you are going to be better off buying some sort of, um, you know, cir- circle cutting um, drill bit. Um, that's not to say it can't be done. It just tends to be a bit more awkward with hand tools. You know, if you're going to be cutting something like that out, 
Um, so me, me personally, I think the smallest, you know, the smallest kind of circle that I, that I will cut out by hand, you know, would be somewhere in the region of maybe, maybe uh, 300 millimetres. That's like kind of one foot. I think that's kind of the smallest I've done. Um, how I would do this, I wouldn't use my Ryobi saw on this now. I have actually demonstrated this in videos and, and other things, and I just wouldn't use my Ryobi saw on this simply be, simply because it's the the radius is just too too small. It's just too much. It's just too much for the saw to handle. So how I would do this, basically, I would obviously mark my circle out. I would cut all the corners off. Um, and then I would start cutting the corners of the corners off, if that makes sense. So every time you cut a corner, you 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 then left with you then left with a corner. I'm ho- I hope I'm making sense, yeah. So I would pretty much do that as much as I could, and then I would I would basically um, clamp it in place on its end. And I would use me personally. I would just use my chisel, and just start and just start removing the very fine corners. You know, the ones that were close to the line. Once that was done, probably take my spoke shave or my shinto rasp. Um, Sometimes it depends. Some if I'm going to do something like this, sometimes I might just go straight to the shinto rasp and use the really coarse um, side of the shinto rasp. Because the Shinro Rasp I've got, it's actually got a really coarse side, and then the other side is um, really, well, it's not really fine, but it's it's a lot finer than the other side. So it's going to be the same again. When you're doing something like this, you have got to pay attention to the way the grain direction is going. So if we could imagine when when I've got it on its side, so the, the end grain would be going... Uh, left to right so that would be obviously um you know parallel with my bench um whereas i would then start at the top and work my way down um you know till i got till i got pretty much like to the point where i was at parallel uh, to the end grain so you know, you would have to kind of, you would kind of have to work f- from the from the top, the center of the top, down to where where I've just said there to the, you know, to your parallel, um, to, you know where the where the end grain is parallel with the bench, like sort of thing. So so basically, you would be working like in a um, a quadrant, if you like. You know, you would you would basically be like um, playing in the quadrant or or using your your, your Shinto rasp. Um, you would turn the piece round, do another quadrant, and then you would turn the piece over quadrant, and then turn it round, do another quadrant. Um, as I said, you have got to pay um, you know attention to the the grain direction, because obviously when you you know you'll you, obviously when you start doing this, or, or, or if you're new at doing this. You know, you you you'll probably you'll probably forget about it. At least I did, in any way, you'll probably forget about things like this. Um, you know, and your tools will your your tools will basically tell you to stop. They should do anyway. Um, you know, if you, if you're going the wrong way, you should just get a lot of chatter. You should get a lot of tear out. Um, it, basically, it's just going to be really super awkward. You know, it's just, it's just not going to feel right. You know, and if something's not feeling right, you just you know take a step back and have a look, and you know, it's it should you know it, things should click into place. And think, oh, you know, I haven't got the board or the orientated the right way. You know, to to be working on a you know a downward stroke, you know, um type of thing, which I prefer to do. So yeah, that's that's something to bear in mind. You know, when you when you're doing things like this. So. Cutting out bigger circles, you know, the likes of um, maybe a, a coffee table or a dining table. 
I haven't actually I haven't actually done this yet and I really want to I really want to do a video to show everybody that this is actually like it's more than possible it's really doable is to actually cut out like a, a, a coffee table or a dining table with me right Obi so you know this is this is a hundred and ten percent doable you know I've, I've obviously I have experimented little little bits and bobs and it is a hundred percent doable you know um I've just yet to get around to doing something like on a on a big scale like that uh, I, I really want to do it and and this is any sort of you know any sort of arc or arch if you like you know that's you know a, a, de a decent size you know I, I'm kind of heading maybe maybe for two foot 500 millimeters you know um heading up to t like kind of two foot which would be like you know close to six like 600 millimeters you know anything like that I'll I'll typically reach for me um my Ryobi saw you know because I, there's actually quite a lot of flex in the Ryobi saw the smaller Ryobi saw is a 240 millimeter blades you know they, they, there's actually quite a lot of flex in them the the one with the most flex in them is the actual one that's designed for the cabinet maker and I think that's 0.45 of a millimeter you know so there is actually quite a lot of flex in that and that's probably what I would go for to cut out like a you know like a, a big decent um, circle. Now, the thing you know you might be asking, you might be saying to yourself, well, why would you actually like you know use a Ryobi saw? You know, obviously there's other um, methods and um, options. The reason I I start like started using it and like using it. It's actually it's actually pretty quick to be honest, um, in the sense that it is quick to actually cut it. You know, if you when you're using the Ryobi saw, um, obviously you have got the cross the cross cut section, and you have got the um, the rip section, obviously on on either side of the blade. So it is actually quite quick if you use the saw correctly. Use the ripping portion when you need to use the ripping portion, and then switch over to the cross cut portion when you need to use the cross cut portion. You know, and it's it's just going to make it um you know that 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 much more quicker, um and enjoyable t you know to use because it's you know it's just going to go through it like butter. Um, the other the other way it takes, uh, sorry the the other way it makes it quick after at least for me as well is because. You, the cuts a lot cleaner if the cuts a lot cleaner it's going to need, need less cleaning up with the likes of um you know maybe a compass plane or a spoke shave um whatever you're going to use you know as i said it's a lot cleaner the cut so you, you don't have to clean up as much so that's that's personally how i would do it and that's how i do do it well or at least that's how I'm going to do it because I do actually plan on doing a little um, circle um, table. It'll probably be a coffee table more slightly, but I do I do plan on doing that in the very near future. So kind of expanding on the, you know, like on the Ryobi saw, so cutting you know circles and arcs and, and whatever else. I do actually use this to, or I have used it to cut. Um, the bows, the bow, the, sorry, the arm bows on um, the Welsh stick chair, uh, two of them I've done actually. Um, so if you check out the video, and again, there's there's a link to my YouTube channel, you know, have a flick through my YouTube channel and, you know, and you'll see it uh, uh, building the Welsh stick chair. And I do actually use the, the Ryobi saw to do this. Um, and I did use it to to cut out the radius of the back of the seat as well. So I will say I did manage um, perfectly for the the arm bow. It was you know it's fine to cut out to cut out the the internal part. I will say it does struggle a little bit on cutting the inter the internal section of it. You know. Um, well, yeah, it is. It's just the internal section of of the of the bow. 
I did manage though, but I, w- I will say it, you know, it was a bit of a struggle. So, you know, it's it's not ideal for the in the internal section, but again, the the external section of the boat was was totally fine, and I would totally recommend it. Um, again, like a lot of stuff like this is, um, you know, I've seen you know on YouTube and and whatever else, or you know, talking to people or. Um, Instagram on social media, you know things like this. You know a lot, of, a lot of it gets done on the band saw. Um, I've seen it done with framing saws. I've seen it done with uh, bow saws. You know, again, I'm not, I'm not like a great fan of of using the bow saws and the framing saws. I just, I just think, I, I think my main issue with them is, especially with the the, the finer. You know the the fine art blades. Um, if you're using a a bow saw or, or a frame saw, how, however you want it, whichever way you want to call it, my biggest like issue with them is just to clean up after it. Um, because if it's a fine if it's a fine blade, uh, me personally, it might, it might just be me not using them correctly or struggling to use them, but I I, I tend to find that you know the the saw kind of wonders and it's it's so the saw cut is very jaggedy um you know you you could actually or i should um maybe look into getting a bit of a you know like a thicker saw blade you know and this would probably eliminate this a little bit but i'm kind of i'm kind of okay with doing what i'm doing yeah, with the techniques I do, you know, I'm not saying I'll never do it. You know, obviously I, I do like to experiment and explore. You know, because I think I think with woodwork and I think you never truly, you'll never truly stop learning. You know, there's always room for improvement, and you know, I don't like to get stuck in my ways. You know, don't get us wrong. I, you know, I, I there is like a lot of stuff I I like to do, and I and I always preach. You know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But at the same time, if there's something better, if there's something quicker, I'm very open-minded like that. And, you know, I implore everybody that's listening to this to, to experiment, you know, and don't just, like, take my word for something or or even your own word, you know. Have, you know, ha- have a look into things, you know, because we're never going to learn and, and progress if we don't do things like this. So I think I've rather than on enough today. Um, so, yeah, that's my... That's my 50 pence on, you know, cutting shapes and, and whatever else and patterns. So I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, if you if, if have got any questions, send us an email or leave, leave a comment on on my social media. Um, oh, I forgot to mention as well, I did actually do a YouTube video this week. Um, and this this was basically just how I joined boards. Um, so keeping on with the YouTube, if there's anything you would like um, like us to do on YouTube, you know, um, again leave a leave a comment uh, on my social media, send us an email. Um, you know, if you'd like to support the show, yeah, there will be links um, in the description so you can do so. Um, and again, thank you very much for taking the time to listen. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, really appreciate everybody that messages us and you know leaves comments. It's it's really good stuff. So thanks again. And until the next time, I'll speak to you later.